Hey everyone, it's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for up to half the cost. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up! And call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Savings based on cost of Consumer Cellular single line 1, 5, and 10 gig data plans with unlimited talk and text compared to lowest cost single line postpaid unlimited talk text and data plans offered by T-Mobile and Verizon January 2024. What's so special about Hero Bread's soft, fluffy, and delicious breads, buns, and tortillas? Hero Bread serves up 0 to 1 grams of net carbs, 5 to 11 grams of protein, and high fiber in every delicious serving. Made with natural ingredients, Hero Bread supports gut health, promotes weight management, and helps maintain blood sugar. Hero also drops other limited edition ultra low net carb goodies like rich flaky croissants and buttery brioche slider rolls. Head to hero.co to shop today. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Before we bring you today's Tales of the Texas Rangers, let's turn on our microphones down the hall in Studio A here at NBC's Hollywood Radio City, where rehearsal for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show is in progress. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's the way we'll do it on the show. It sounded great, fellas. Phil, uh, would you like to talk to the listeners during this break and rehearsal? Yeah, Bill, I'd love to. Folks, I'd just like to take a few seconds here to remind you about part of the fine lineup of entertainment for the rest of the evening right here on NBC. Right after Tales of the Texas Rangers, listen to the big show with Tallulah Bankhead and all of her darling guest stars. I know you'll want to hear the music and comedy. The big show is lined up for you today. And then we come on to keep you entertained with our show. Starring Alice Faye, Frankie Remley, Julius Abruzio, and some band leader, Phil... uh, What's his name? Please, will you slow up a minute? (laughs) It's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, right after the big show today. And I hope you'll listen, folks. And now, let's return to Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Hitchhiker. It is shortly after dawn on the morning of April 4th, 1947. Hod Cotter of Boca County, Texas, is driving away from his small ranch on Farm Road 102. Suddenly, he sees a man on the side of the road thumbing a ride. Well, on the left, young fella. Ah, thanks. Well, hop in, if you don't mind riding in this old crate. <laughs> Just listen to her boil. Yeah. Well, where are you heading for? Uh, El Paso. Well, I ain't going that far, but uh, I can take you to Elkton. Well, I'll be fair. Kind of out of your way, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. Last ride left me off up the line and spent the night under a tree. Yeah, that's tough. Night's mighty cold for this time of year. Mm-hmm. You can cut down to 80 from Elkton, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's funny the way you popped out from nowhere. The dang air didn't see you. I'm glad you did. Hey, you, you stopping? Just for some water. Why? Ain't in any rush, eh? Uh, no, 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 it's all right. Uh, now look at this map. Help yourself. It won't take long. Howdy, Hot. Not out of gas already. You just got some last night. Morning, Charlie. No, it's just water this time. I'll get it. Oh, the water cap sure is hot. Oh, let me see there. Yeah, it's that water pump leaking. Better let me put you in a new one, Hot. Oh, well, not right now, Charlie. I've got to get into town. Now, don't go putting it off. That pump ain't going to get no better. I'll tell you what. I'll leave the car with you when I get back. Uh, Round noon. Fine. You figure to take the shortcut? I usually do. Why? You run into my boy Clark down at the junction. He's working on the roadblock. Constable deputized him about an hour ago. 
Roadblock? What for? Ain't you heard? Some guy broke jail at poker. Slugged a deputy bringing in his dinner last night. No. Fact. Swiped his keys and his gun. Tied the poor fellow up tight. You don't say. He broke into the locker and changed clothes, too. I imagine that. What's he look like? Well, they ain't had time to get pictures out yet. The whole thing only broke an hour ago when the sheriff came on to relieve his deputy. They don't expect to find their man way over here, do they? They're crazy, ain't it? Last place in the world he'd head for. Oh, well, I guess they'll pick him up before long. I'll be seeing you, Charlie. Yeah, around noon, eh? Yep. Okay. Don't forget now. I won't. Say, ain't that something? That guy breaking jail? Yeah. Uh, how far away is that junction the gas man was talking about? He's just around the bend up ahead. Hey, Pop. Huh? When we go through that roadblock, I'm going to be your nephew, understand? What? Huh? Are you kidding, mister? This gun will show you if I'm kidding or not. Well, hey, I don't think I won't use it. When I ask you who I am, I'm your nephew. I'm from Dallas. Been staying with you a few days. Get it? Say, you ain't... You ain't the filler in the book. What huh? do you think? Watch where you're driving. Hey. Now, look, mister. Shut your trap. Uh, there he is, flying us down. I got a bad cold, see? I'll keep my face covered with this handkerchief. And this gun's under my coat, pointing straight at your liver. I ain't fooling, Pop. I got nothing to lose. One break and you're a goner. All I got to do is let loose this hammer. Morning, hon. Uh, how do you, Clark? We're checking everybody. Count a jailbreak. Yeah, your pa was telling me. I'm kind of new at this roadblock business. First time I've ever been on one. Matter of fact, there's a bus car stop. You don't say. Yeah. Sheriff's going to get regular deputies here soon. Here's a couple of rangers, too. You seem to be doing a good job, Clark. <laughs> it's more fun than working in the gas station, anyway. Uh, who's this, Weddy Hard? I'm supposed to check, you know. He's a... Uh, he's my nephew, uh, Fred Smiley. This is uh, Clark Hollister, Fred. He met his dad up the road. Yeah, yeah. Howdy, Clark. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Smiley. So Fred's been down to visit me the uh, last couple of days from Dallas. Oh, Dallas, huh? I was up in Dallas myself last year. Uh, see, so you, you got a bad cold? Yeah, yeah. I can't seem to shake it. Uh, don't you think we'd better get going, Uncle? Yeah, uh, Clark, can we move on now? I've got a lot of things to do down to Elton. Well, gosh, I'm, I'm supposed to ask strangers for identification, papers and stuff, you know. Oh, shucks, you being Hodge's nephew, you know, sure, go ahead. Okay, boys, pass this one through down there, huh? By 9 a.m., the deputized citizens at the roadblocks had been replaced by regular law enforcement officers. A manhunt under the supervision of Texas Ranger Jace Pearson and Sheriff Sam Ford combed the county with dogs and horses, but failed to locate scent or trail of the escaped prisoner. Next afternoon, Ranger Pearson and the sheriff were completing a routine check near the eastern edge of the county. Not many folks around here, Jace. A couple of small ranchers in a store or two just about winded up. It doesn't look too promising, Sheriff. We had another roadblock at that junction we just passed. I see the constable's already called it off. Uh, not much use keeping the boys out any longer. The man's probably a long way off by now. We must have got through yesterday morning before we set the blocks up. That's the way things break sometimes, sir. There's Charlie Hollister's gas station up ahead. Charlie gets to see everybody in these parts. Anything out of the way happened, you know about it. Oh, evening, sir. Howdy, Charlie. Shake hands with Ranger Pearson. Well, Glad to know you, Mr. Hollister. And likewise, Ranger. Got a line on your jailbreaker yet? Yeah, we're still working on it. We're pretty sure he's out of the county anyway. Any cars reported stolen? No, but he could have caught a ride before the news broke. Uh-huh. Have you seen his picture, Mr. Hollister? Oh. oh, they had it in the newspaper. But this is a lot better picture. Yeah, how about that young fellow back there? That's my son. Clark, come here a minute. Yeah, Paul. Meet Ranger Pearson, Clark. You know the sheriff. Oh, howdy, Ranger. Sheriff? Hello, Clark. Constable had you working on the roadblock, didn't he, Clark? Yeah, just for spell. They keep you busy? No. You've seen Ree's picture, haven't you, Clark? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure didn't come through while I was on duty, though, Ranger. Well, appreciate you helping out, Clark. Oh, not at all. Anytime you need me, Sheriff. Thanks. I'll call on you if I do. I'll see you later, Charlie. All right. We're going to check a few more houses up the line. So long. Uh, oh, say, Sheriff. Yeah? Hey, uh, you figuring to stop at Hard Carter's? Yeah, why? Would you tell him I'm still waiting on him for that water pump? The old son's always going to leave me his car yesterday. Sure thing, Charlie. I'll tell him. Probably forgot all about it. Nephew visiting him and all. What nephew? I never heard Hod had no nephew. Well, neither did I till I met him. Been with him a couple of days, Hod said. Well, sure is funny. I've known Hod 30 years. He never mentioned any nephew to me. What'd this fellow look like, Clark? Well, 
couldn't rightly see. He had a bad cold, though. Was blowing his nose in a big handkerchief. You better take another look at this picture. Try to remember. Well, Jim, I'm not sure, but, but Hod told me it was his nephew. Wait a minute. Hod was riding some young fellow when he come through here. Let me see that picture again, Ranger. Does it look like him? Well, I ain't too sure. Come to think of it, he had his face buried in a road map. Well, didn't Hod tell you it was his nephew? No. Funny, ain't it? You'd have thought it was just some hitchhiker Hod picked up. Sheriff, maybe we'd better get up to Carter's and check on this nephew. <laughs> That's Hart's place up there ahead. Yeah, I'll pull up here. Hart lives here alone, runs a few head of cattle. You'll get a kick out of Hart. The old coot's a real character. He doesn't seem to be in. I guess not. We could go in and see if anything's been disturbed. Hart never locks up. Left his breakfast stuff on the table. Yeah, Hart never was much of a housekeeper. This isn't today's breakfast, Sheriff. How do you mean, Jace? Looks like he's been gone a couple of days. This milk's sour. The butter's turning rancid. You're sure right. Sheriff, what is it, Jace? Didn't Carter say his nephew'd been staying here with him? That's what he told Clark. There's only one plate here. And one coffee cup. Hollister said the man with Carter looked like a hitchhiker. Yeah. Hid his face behind a map or a handkerchief when anybody might see him. By golly, you don't Sheriff. Think... We were hunting for one missing man. Now I got a hunch we're looking for two. Charlie Hollister and his son gave us a few more details, and then I put out an all-points bulletin including a description of Hod Carter's car. Sheriff and I started west, the direction the car had been heading when last seen. All night long, we woke up sleeping gas station operators, grocers, and cafe owners. Well, it don't seem likely they could go this far without... Eating or gassing up? No, I must have turned somewhere along the line. The question is, north or south? <laughs> we'll have to check both. You know, Jace, I'm worried about Hart. I can't see Reeves lugging an old man very far. Well, Carter got him through a roadblock. Maybe he figured to use him again. You said everybody knows the old man. Yeah, Hart's a fixture around this country. Been here longer than I can remember. Ornery cuss sometimes. Independent as a hog on ice. But you couldn't help liking him. Well, don't give him up yet, Sheriff. No use borrowing trouble. I guess not. County line up ahead a couple of miles. You going to stay with me? I'm glad to have you along. I'd like to, Jace. Like to a lot. But I ought to be... KTXP to Unit 10. Who's KTXP take us calling me? Unit 10. Unit 10 to KTXP. Go ahead. Unit 22 is trying to contact Unit 10 direct. Give location, please. Unit 10, located approximately 80 miles west of Boca. Is Unit 22 outside my range? Yes, Unit 22 is located at Starrett. Ask Unit 22 to stand by. Unit 10, raising balloon aerial to receive Unit 22 signal direct. 10-4, we'll relay your message to Unit 22. 10-4, Unit 10, clear. KDXP, Vegas. Uh, balloon aerial's in the trunk. You want to give me a hand, Sheriff? Sure thing. 22, that's Clay Morgan's unit. You know him? I can't say I do. Ah, here she is. I'll hook up the gas. Think he's got news on Reeves, Jace? That's possible. Stare it. That's a long way south of here. Well, I got 50 feet of cable here. That'll give me plenty of pickup. Yeah, and I was thinking, Reeves sure gave us a slip if he's way down there. Well, we'll find out in a minute. If you'll raise the balloon the rest of the way, Sheriff, I'll get back on the phone. Right, Jace. Be careful not to get any kinks in that line. I'll watch it. Unit 10 to Unit 22. Unit 10 to Unit 22. Unit 22 to Unit 10. Is my signal clear? Signal clear, Unit 22. Have you information for this unit? Yes, Unit 10. Car described in your APB of this date was observed in Starrett at 7.30 this morning. You hear him all right, Chase? Fine. Clay says the car was seen. 10-4. Is identification positive, Unit 22? Positive, Unit 10. Witness here identified driver from photo as fugitive from Boca County. What about Hart? I'll check. Unit 10's bulletin described two men in car. Did your witness identify the second passenger also? Witness states one man in car at the time. Fugitive only. (laughs) 
just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. This week, nearly three million of our nation's youth are celebrating the 42nd anniversary of the Boy Scouts of America. These three million youths are currently benefiting from the Boy Scout program. And on the sidelines, looking on with approval, are more than 19 million former Scouts. For the past 42 years, the Boy Scouts of America have been training good citizens. Today, the program goes forward through the efforts of the nation's 735,000 adult volunteer Scout leaders. Perhaps you would like to help as a Scout leader. If you would, call your local Scout headquarters and volunteer your services. This year, the nation's Scouts are setting forth on a new three-year program known as Forward on Liberty's Team. The Scout leaders see the new program as a challenge that the youth of America may have available a program of character development so that they may be trained on their honor to do their duty to God and their duty to their country. Happy birthday to the Boy Scouts of America. And now let's return to Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Hitchhiker. I dropped the sheriff off at the next town where he could phone for a ride back to Boca, and I really burned rubber. An hour later, I pulled up in the rear of the highway patrol office in Starrett, where I'd arranged to meet Clay. Clay was saddling his horse outside. Hey, you sure made good time. Oh, Clay, I didn't want to hold you up. Well, I think we really got your fugitive bottled up this time. Yeah, I came through one of your roadblocks. Yeah, I thought we might take our horses down the other way and work in. That's a good idea. Why don't you load your horse in my trailer with charcoal? We can take my unit. All right. Come on, Dan, old boy, over this way. Come on. What's the story, Clay? Uh, Reeves pulled up at the Five Point Station just outside town here, got his tank filled, and hightailed off without paying. All right, well, Dan, hold it up, boy. Which way do you go? Well, he took off east from the station. East, huh? He's been heading just about every way but up since he broke jail. Yeah. Yeah, Reeves must know the car's hot by this time, Chase. No word from old man Carter, though, eh? No. Maybe we'll find him in a gully somewhere. We got men backtracking toward Boca for his body. All right, in you go, boy. Come on. Hey, you mind getting that phone, Chase? All the boys are out in the blockade. I'll take it. There you are, Danny boy. Get an ambulance out there right away. Thanks. What's up, Chase? Carter's been found on a side road 12 miles south of here. How is he? Pretty bad, but he's still alive. Let's get going. I guess we beat the ambulance here, Jace. Yeah. Pardon us, folks. Stand back, please. Yeah, let us through here. Thank you very much. Let us through here. Mr. Carter? Ranger? How is he, Jace? Uh, he took a real pistol whipping. If you want to move him, might be a concussion. Uh, I, I'm all right. Does it hurt you to talk? No, no. Reeves do this to you? Yeah. I run, he, he slugged me. How long goes this been, Mr. Carter? I don't know. What time is it now? It's 10.15, Mr. Carter. An hour, maybe. Maybe longer. Well, it must be longer than that, Jase. Gas station man reported Reeves was alone. That's nearly three hours ago. I was with him, Ren. You were? Yeah. Made me scrounge down on the floor. Get that gun on my neck. He, he used it, too, if I'd let out a peep. Well, that puts us a lot closer to him. Which way did he go, Carter? I couldn't say. Drove every which way. Kept off the main road. He... Get that car moving from here? Yeah, don't try to turn your head. Yeah, the car's gone. Oh, didn't think he did go after running to that tree. It must have been that tree there, Chief. Yeah, it took quite a smack from the looks of it. Yeah. Hey, the ambulance is coming, Chief. Good. He was driving. He was at the wheel. I see. But you don't know where he was heading. I don't know. Uh, wait a minute, he did say once he was going to try for Mexico. Right over here with the picture, boy. Over right. here. Thanks, Mr. Carter. You're going to be all right. Yeah. Did he say Mexico, Jason? Yeah. We got to stop him before he gets there. Time was running short now, and we knew it. We alerted all officers to be on the lookout for Reeves within 50-mile radius. Then we continued up that road. 
wandered into the foothills, getting worse all the time. Reeves have to be pretty desperate to take this kind of punishment. Yeah, the road's not much better than a cow path from here on. You been up here before, Jays? Yeah. Only goes a few miles more. There's a couple of Mexican families that have shacks up there in the hills. Mm-hmm. Reeves will never make Mexico on this road, then. Yeah, he wouldn't know that. He'd think it goes straight through. Yeah. Man on foot might keep going. Rough hiking over those hills, though. Yeah, Reeves mightn't have had any other choice. Maybe sooner than we figure. Well, how so, Jace? Look at our temp gauge. <whistles> boiler he's driving would be blowing up by this time. Yeah, you'd think so. Keep an eye out for it. He might have... What's the matter, Jace? Look behind us. Hey, how you like that? Hard Carter's car. Not a bad hiding place behind those rocks. Coming from our direction, you'd have never guessed it was there. I wouldn't have seen it at all if I hadn't been watching the rearview mirror. Boy, that wreck sure didn't do this car any good. I don't think that's what stopped it, though. See that puddle under the radiator? Mm-hmm. That water pump's still leaking. And Reeves might have pulled up here for a little shut-eye while the engine cooled down. Yeah, and while he waited, water drained right out of the bottom. Yeah. Well, there's not a house in sight. Mr. Reeves drew himself a long walk. Yeah, here's his track. Started down the road. Uh-oh. What, Jase? He's turned off to the right. Yeah, looks like he's aiming for that dry wash. Nothing ahead of that but the mountains. Well, if he's still figuring to get to Mexico, he's sure doing it the hard way. Yeah. Unless maybe he saw something out there. Something we don't see. Come on, Clay. Let's get the horses and find out. <laughs> Seems to know where he's going, all right. Yeah, heading straight for the mountains. I can't see why I didn't stick to the road. Oh, Reeves knows what he's doing. He's been playing too smart so far to pull any... Whoa, who charged you? Whoa, boy. Whoa, Dan, whoa. What you got there, Jace? Here's our answer. Burrow tracks. So that's what he saw from the road, a burrow. He came up to it and got on. Yeah, see where the marks overlap Reeves' footprints? Yeah, I see. Then he rode off toward the mountain. Yeah, wait a minute. Somebody was on that burrow already. He's a trail coming toward us. A grazing animal wouldn't walk that straight. Yeah, you're right, Jase. Yeah. Going away, the tracks are deeper. Yeah, can double. He said there were Mexicans in these hills, huh? Yeah, a couple families. Well, they'd have water and food. Yeah, and Reeves needs both. We better keep going, Clay. We followed the burrow trail across the dry wash. From there, it took practically a straight line through the brush and rocks toward the base of a jagged ridge in the distance. Before we got there, a figure came into view from behind one of the lower foothills. Chase, there's your burro coming this way. Yeah, with a Mexican on him. Come on, Charlie. Yep. Let's move, boy. Come on. Ooh, ooh. Hold it. Hold up. Some. Hold it. Buenos dias, senor ranger. Buenos dias. Howdy. Ah, it's a big surprise to see you rangers way down here. Yeah, we're looking for a man. Here's his picture. Uh, you seen him around? Gracias. Pero si. Si is the same man. Guru, you are looking for this man? Yeah. Where'd you see him? But he is in my house. Now? Si, senor. I meet him on the road. I ride him on Nita here to the house, and I leave him to sleep on hammock. He's very tired out. He asked me to put water in his car and drive it back to the house. He promised me a dollar. He won't give you a dollar, my friend. More likely give you a bullet. Oh, mother mia. He's a bad man. He's plenty bad. Now tell me, is there a way we can ride up to your house without his seeing us? See si, the road... She go there, but she is all in the open. We may have to rush him, Jace. No, oh, no, no, senor. Por favor, mi esposa, mi niños. Yeah, we can't do that, Clay. This no, man's senor. wife and children are there. Please, oh. senor. They will be killed. Well, we'll have to get Reeves away from the house somehow. Yeah. Senor, you say this man expects you to drive his car to your house for him? Si, si, si. Well, then you're not going to disappoint him. Let's go back and get the water in the car. You mean I'm going to drive the car to him the way he want me? Yeah. Only we're going to be in the back seat. Come on, Clay. Let's go, Charky. I am very scared. Yeah, there's nothing to be scared of. You just do as we tell you. Is that your house up ahead? You see, senor. Quit that. Get down. He will see you. Okay, Clay. We'll latch on to Reeves' little trick. Down on the floor. Right, Jason. Yeah. See him yet? Yeah, I can't see the hammock, senor. But he is not there. No, what could have happened? Get down, Clay. Yeah. I guess Maria, my wife, she's maybe giving him something to eat in the house. Okay, stop the car off to one side, 50 feet from the house. Si, senor. I am almost there, senor. All right, now, remember what we told you. I am plenty scared. Buck up. Just don't cross him. 
You make out. All right. I wish I could believe that myself. I'm going to say that again. Say yours. Uh, your car. She's ready. Okay. Put the water in. Si, senor. I put the water in. She's all ready to go. All right, all right. Don't rush me. Oh, no, no, senor. So far, so good. I didn't get in the car before we take him. Uh, what's the big idea of parking right over there? Could you drive to the door? I, I am sorry, senor. I, I didn't know, senor. Yeah. I, I don't want no money, senor. Huh? Please. I know you say you pay, but it's all right. I, I don't want it. You go now, poor fellow. What do you mean you don't want money? You need money bad. What's the big idea anyway? Just what do you know? Come on, no, off with no, it. No, no, no. What I know you know. You'll have to take him now, Clay. With you, Jimmy. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Get away from him. Put your hands up. Come on. Good work, Jace. You got him. Yeah. Pulling that gun. That was a mistake, Reeves. I'm sorry I didn't. Kill you, copper. All right, just try these cuffs on for size, Reed. Oh, oh my hand. Here, let's see it. Yeah, you're just nicked. But it'll be a long time before you use that thumb again for hitchhiking. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Hello, friends. This is Jack Parr. I'll be with you later this evening with the $64 question, but right now I'd like to remind you about some of the other great shows this evening on the NBC radio network. In just a few minutes, you'll hear the big show with Tallulah Bankhead and a big array of guest stars. And, of course, Meredith Wilson will be on hand to direct the big show orchestra and chorus. You will hear 90 minutes of scintillating comedy and music today on the big show. And then, right after the big show, stick around for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show with Frankie Remley, Julius Abruzio, Brother William, and the entire Harris household. It's a program that's sure to please you. Later today, Theater Guild on the Air will bring you stars from Hollywood and Broadway in an exciting Broadway play. And right after Theater Guild on the Air, I'll be back with a pocket full of money and the $64 question. I'll be talking to a lot of contestants tonight, and maybe you will hear one of your neighbors. So why not stay tuned right now to the NBC for a whole evening of great entertainment. I'll be looking for you in our radio audience tonight. And now, let's get back to the tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Al Reeves was returned to Boca County where he was convicted not only of the crimes for which he had been waiting trial, but for jailbreak, armed robbery, and kidnapping as well. Sentence was set at 10 years on each count, 40 years in all, to be served in the state penitentiary at Huntsville. And here, once again, is the star of our show, Joel McRae. There's an interesting story I heard a short time ago from our good friend and technical advisor, Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez. It seems that a good many years ago, a ranger captain was assigned as bodyguard to escort President William H. Taft on a tour through Texas. At every stop made by the party, the ranger captain was required to precede the president as they stepped from the train. Amid shouts of, there's a Texas ranger... The President of the United States found his popularity and appeal in Texas second to that of the Ranger. Somewhat embarrassed, the Ranger turned to the chief executive and said, Mr. President, don't mind them. They just don't want me to feel bad. So long, folks. See you next week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae will soon be seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. The cast included Tony Barrett, Tim Graham, Lou Krugman, Nestor Piva, Ed Begley, and Herb Ellis. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Lawrence Goldman, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keith. Hal Gibney speaking. Next, The Big Show brings you 90 minutes of drama, comedy, and music on NBC.